The Lord told Joseph Smith to say nothing but repentance unto this generation. With that in mind, I've decided to share my insights on repentance that I have learned from these chapters. The Guide to the Scriptures defines repentance as a change of mind and heart that brings us a fresh attitude toward God, oneself, and life in general. Repentance implies that a person turns away from evil and turns his heart and will to God, submitting to God's commandments and desires and forsaking sin. True repentance comes from a love for God and a sincere desire to obey His commandments. When we typically think about repentance, we think about it in terms of repenting from sin. Sin separates us from God. When we sin, we essentially are telling God that something or someone is more important than He is. President Oak said, We must repent of all our sins, all of our actions or inactions, contrary to the commandment of God. None of us is exempt. At the beginning of Alma 4, the Nephites see their afflictions as a call to repentance and begin to establish the church more fully. They had so much success that 3,500 people were baptized. But it wasn't even a full year later that the people of the church started sinning again and were quickly leading the remainder of the population further away from God instead of toward Him. Alma steps down from the judgment seat and is poised to begin his mission of crying repentance to the Nephites. As for the remainder of the plotline covered in this week's chapters, Nehor kills Gideon, dies an ignominious death, his doctrine lives after him, lots of pride, contention, and dissensions from the church, Amasai tries to become king, and thousands and tens of thousands of souls were sent to the eternal world that they might reap their rewards according to their works, whether they were good or whether they were bad, to reap eternal happiness or eternal misery, according to the spirit that they listed to obey, whether it be a good spirit or a bad one. It doesn't seem like there are a lot of good examples of repentance in these chapters. But let's look at these chapters focusing on repentance as turning towards God a change of mind and heart that brings a fresh attitude toward God, oneself, and life in general. In Alma 1, the members of the church are being persecuted for their beliefs. Many members are dissenting and priestcraft is spreading. In verse 25, it says, Now this was a great trial to those that did stand fast in the faith. Nevertheless, they were steadfast and immovable in keeping the commandments of God and they bore with patience the persecution which was heaped upon them. They turned toward God in their trials. They sought to keep his commandments. In the subsequent verses, it says that they diligently sought to hear the word of God. They worked hard, they had charity for those in need, and they were humble. That is repentance. This is turning to God and putting his will above their own. And what was the result? Verse 28 reveals, They began to have continual peace again, notwithstanding all their persecutions. Their circumstances hadn't changed, but because they turned toward God, they had a change of mind and heart that brought a fresh attitude toward God, oneself, and life in general. They were able to begin to find peace in adversity. President Nelson teaches that repentance is not an event. It is a process. It is the key to happiness and peace of mind. When coupled with faith, repentance opens our access to the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ. When we begin to continue the process of repentance, we can watch for when we begin to have peace again. We can watch for blessings that we receive and our hope can turn to faith that God is really working in our lives. We can also repent and turn to God in times when we need additional strength. When they were preparing to battle an enormous Lamanite army, the Nephites were strengthened by the hand of the Lord, having prayed mightily to hear him, that he would to him that he would deliver them out of the hands of their enemies. Therefore the Lord did hear their cries, and did strengthen them. Alma turned to God for even more additional strength in the heat of the battle when facing Amlicite in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The challenges we face each day can feel like a battle. We frequently can feel as if the opposition is an army as numerous almost as it were the sands of the sea. We cannot face our trials alone. Life was designed so that we would turn to God as we prepare for and fight in the battle of each day. 
One aspect of the daily battle is the battle with sin. President Nelson teaches, The battle with sin is real. The adversary is quadrupling his efforts to disrupt testimonies and impede the work of the Lord. He is arming his minions with potent weapons to keep us from partaking of the joy of and love of the Lord. Satan is extremely good at what he does. From global pandemics, political upheaval, financial crises, family turmoil, to more temptations to count, Satan has provided many excuses to distract us from Christ. President Nelson continues, Too many people consider repentance as punishment something to be avoided except in the most serious circumstances. But this feeling of being penalized is engendered by Satan. He tries to block us from looking to Jesus Christ, who stands with open arms, hoping and willing, willing to heal, forgive, cleanse, strengthen, purify, and sanctify us. Each of us can use a little more forgiveness, a little more freedom from guilt, a little more strength, and a little more sanctification. Each of us needs a little more Christ in our lives. We need His power and His love. Let us change our views of repentance and focus on the privilege and blessing of drawing closer to our Savior during the daily repentance process. In His talk, We Can Do Better and Be Better, focused on daily repentance, President Nelson gives this promise. I bless you with the courage to repent daily and learn how to exercise full priesthood power. I bless you to communicate the love of the Savior to your spouse and children and to all who know you. I bless you to do better and be better. And I bless you that as you make these efforts, you will experience miracles in your life. As I have worked to focus on daily turning towards my Savior, I have been able to find peace in my trials. I have been able to see improvements in my weaknesses that I could not have done alone. I know that Jesus Christ is my Redeemer and that He wants each of us to turn to Him for the strength, healing, and protection that only He can offer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.